Happy Saturday, guys. How are y'all doing? So I was at a local bookstore yesterday, and this caught my eye. I have not bought new cards in so long. I'm really excited. Look at this subtitle. So it's called Happy-ish. An oracle deck for people going through hard stuff. And then in parentheses, which is basically everybody, right? I mean, let's face it, you don't find tarot land and YouTube spiritual videos <laughs> if you're not uh, going through some sort of transition or crossroads or decision-making process or dark night of the soul or uh, what the fuck moment where your world has been spun around, flipped upside down, um, all of that. I know I did, and I know most people um, find their way here from there. So let's see what this deck has to say. And also, before I start, my daughter found this yellow flower. I mean, not flower. <laughs> I'm looking down at these two. Feather. And I know I could Google it, but I'm wondering if anybody knows what kind of bird this came from it's like it's pretty big and just such a bright yellow here's one side of it here's the other side of it so if you guys let me know in the comments that would be great if you do know and then I just love this little puff ball I don't know what it is but it's soft so I'm gonna sit with this too Okay, so on the back of the deck, and this is by Nora McCurney, by the way, if you're interested in getting it, um, it says, pick a card, bask in its reassuring yet rock-solid wisdom, repeat daily, hourly, whenever-ly. I love it. Okay, so, I mean, I could do like a walkthrough of what, you know, just the main part of each one, or I could just shuffle and get us a message for today. What to do, what to do. Hmm. I got something black on my hands, so first I'm gonna take care of that so I don't get it on the cards. Let's just go through them one by one, and then we'll pick one for the day. So, of course, I'm not going to read all of this, but let's just see what the, the gist of it is. So, we've got life is not a self-improvement exercise. <laughs> well, hot damn. I've needed to hear that for a few years. Healing takes time. Happiness is not a pursuit. That is a person. You are not a sad story. Growth is sneaky. You are loved. Not everything you think is true. Holy moly. I need to be reminded of that a lot. My imagination can get the best of me. You're doing a good job. Let it be complicated. Nothing grows forever. Just quit. <laughs> I'm dying to read what that one says. The very last line is winners love to quit. So I'm guessing it has something to do with it's okay to change course, pivot, you know, um, make a new decision, make some mistakes. That's for all my recovering perfectionist. What if everything worked out? Comparison is a thief. It's the thief of joy. I'm sure you've heard that quote. Be where you are. Oh my God, I have to read the first line of this. Time traveling to an imaginary future or an immutable past can give us an escape when life feels boring or hard or annoying or too good to be true. Any other escape artists out there? So you messed up. 
let it go. Where are the instructions? <laughs> I remember when my first child was born and I, I guess I'll take a little moment for story time. Leading up to his birth, first of all, I had always, always, always wanted to be a mom. I started babysitting at like 11. I just always had the, you know, maternal pull or instinct or whatever. So leading up to his birth, I had been really like deep diving on all kinds of alternative, you know, birthing methods and parenting methods and uh, reading about and listening to stories of unassisted births and water births and home births and all of this stuff. So we, um, my husband and I at the time, we decided on a home water birth with a midwife <clears throat> and a doula. And after 24 hours of labor, he wouldn't flip. He was sunny side up. And so I was having basically with each contraction, our spines were grinding together because his spine should have been lined up with my stomach and it was instead he was facing forward. So it was excruciating. I was like leaving my body with the contractions. The pain was so extreme and leading up until the actual birth and during our birthing classes and all that, I was extremely militant about wanting to do it at home, you know, and like not wanting all of the sterile, like hospital, do it by the book procedures. You can only be in labor this long and we're gonna shoot you up with Pitocin and then we're gonna do this and that and that. Well, we had had like a safe word between me and my husband, basically meaning like, if I say this, I'm not kidding. I'm not just in transition. I need to go to the hospital. I changed my mind. I'm, I'm throwing in the towel. We got to go to the hospital. Well, at a certain point, I can't remember how many hours in, I mean, it was close to the end. So maybe like 22 or 23 hours in, I was like, I was like, I'm, I gotta go. Like we gotta go. Of course I wasn't talking like this. I was incoherent. I mean, I was, it was insane. So because I myself had been so like adamant, the midwife and my husband were like, are you sure? Like, you're so close. You're so close. You know, like we, like you're, he's right there, blah, blah, blah. So because of my own stubbornness, like leading up to it and my unwillingness to even consider what would happen um, if we had to go to the hospital versus at home, my own like support team <laughs> sort of like didn't believe me basically, which in the end, and, and he was born um, at the hospital and all was well, but they did keep him um, in the NICU, which was funny because he was eight pounds, 11 ounces. So it was almost like a, looking back, like I bet it looked hilarious walking by because he took up most of the incubator and then there's these itty bitty preemies and he looked giant and he was only a day old, you know, or two days old. Um, but coming, bringing him home after this very extreme birth trauma experience, I was like, where's the instructions? Somebody give me instructions right now because I'm losing it. I don't know what to do. I I don't know how to breastfeed. I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm trying to process what happened and I need some instructions right now. <laughs> so if anybody else is at a point in their life where they feel like, where's the manual? Just give me the steps. I need instructions because I am not okay. Well then I can relate because that was, that was an extreme example, but I felt called to share it. So, okay. Ramble, ramble. We've got your learning. Not everyone likes you. That's been a hard one for me to accept. Love is dot, dot, dot. This is temporary. Life is not a buffet. 
Be needy. I'm curious about that one. We'll see if that one comes out when I shuffle. Love yourselves. Oh my God, I've been doing so much uh, parts work. I highly recommend if somebody, if you guys are looking to learn about the different aspects that live within you and to integrate those, um, there's a therapeutic method called IFS. It's internal family systems. You can look up videos on YouTube if you don't have a practitioner in your area or you don't can't afford it. But it is really, to me, it's such a holistic way to look at all the components of our personality, you know, because we're not just one thing. And all those different components came from a certain time period in our life. They step forward with a certain role, you know, and it's, it's like, I feel like on some level because of the amount of collective trauma that we have that there's sort of like this collective DID which is dissociative identity disorder but it's like especially when you consider past lives that so much lives in our DNA so much lives in our cells so much lives in our body even just from this lifetime and it's like once you start meeting these parts loving yourselves plural you know, also when you factor in multidimensional selves, you know, all of the selves that live on different timelines, parallel timelines, future timelines, past timelines, like, takes a lot of love. You get to name it. You contain multitudes. That's exactly what I was just saying. Wow, I love this deck already. Have some perspective. Maybe it's both. Get excited about something. It hurts to grow. You've changed. You are not what you do. Anybody else grow up in an achievement-based household? This one's for you. Something bad could happen. It could, but the thing about the worst case scenario is that we don't know what it will be or when or if it will ever happen. The best that, that could happen is equally unknowable, equally unpredictable. Best of all, most of life is just right in the middle. Totally forgettable and utterly boring. What do you need? Don't should yourself. Recovering uh, people pleasers, anybody? Oh, but I should do this. Like, oh, I should, you know, feel this way or I should help in this way or I should do this, should do that. So we are going to try not to should ourselves. Sorry yourself. It's agony to wait for those words, to tap your foot and hope for someone to see the error of their ways. The bummer truth is they may never apologize. You might not get the closure you want or the explanation you're owed, so give it to yourself. I mean it. Stop waiting on someone else and give yourself the damn apology you're waiting on. Shh. Feel with me. You're not a loser. You're a work in progress. Be nice to the intern. Yes. What can I do? The future is dot, dot, dot. How are you really? This reminds me so much of <clears throat> you know, culturally, I grew up in the South and it's, you know, it's just see somebody and it's like, Hey, how are you? 
And it's like, are you really asking? Do you really want them to answer? You know, because a lot of people don't really want to know and they don't really want the actual answer. They're just saying it because that's what they've always said. So I'm interested to see the rest of that one. Yes, and where is everyone? Fuck lemonade. <laughs> where is, uh, oh my God, what's his channel's name? Uh, Draco Nobody. He ends his videos. Y'all should check him out. He's great. We don't move on, we move forward. I love that. Ooh, the little edges are bent on that one. Okay, these are an interesting shape. Let's see how they shuffle and we'll get us one message for today. I'll read the whole card and then um, I will either see you guys later or hopefully tomorrow. Let's give them a regular shuffle. Ooh, hold on. I'm gonna have to get them a little more bendy. There we go. Do another. Okay. Ooh, yeah, they gotta be separated a little bit. Look how they're sticking together. ask you to think of <clears throat> a question or just tune in to how you're feeling and your heart right now and I'm going to trust that the message that you need in this moment is going to come through in whatever way you need it and that you can receive it top of the pile that fell comparison is a thief Teddy Roosevelt told us that comparison is the thief of joy, and he didn't even have an Instagram. <laughs> comparison can steal a lot more than just joy. It can steal your confidence, your progress, your forward momentum, your sense of self-worth. This life is yours and yours alone. Today, listen to the voice of your elementary school teachers and keep your eyes on your own paper. <laughs> with these pretty little flowers all right you guys I love y'all thanks for sitting with me if you did that was fun for me and um, I'm excited to have some new cards to share with you guys and I'm just sending you so much love I hope you have a beautiful Saturday and I will see you again soon bye